Hello, welcome everybody. This is Dr. Bolad. Today I will talk to you about how to diagnose atrial fibrillation. For those who are new to my channel, I am a board certified cardiologist and interventional cardiologist. And here on this channel, you will find lots of education about heart health and heart disease. So if you are interested, don't forget to subscribe and switch on the notification bell so you don't miss any new videos that I post. So let's get started with this video about how to diagnose atrial fibrillation. In any patient with suspected or proven atrial fibrillation, the history from the patient is very important and we particularly concentrate on the presence of associated conditions that increase the risk of development of atrial fibrillation. These conditions include cardiovascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and obstructive sleep apnea. In addition, we ask about symptoms of overactive thyroid and whether the individual uses excessive alcohol. All these conditions I mentioned are associated with increased risk of development of atrial fibrillation. During physical examination, we focus on the cardiovascular system and any associated conditions. Abnormal findings may provide information to the physician about associated conditions that might be contributing to the onset of atrial fibrillations. These include heart murmurs or arterial pulse abnormalities that might indicate narrowed or leaky mitral or aortic valve, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and signs and symptoms of heart failure. During atrial fibrillation with an irregularly irregular pulse, there is commonly a slight variation in the intensity of the heart sounds. As the heart rate is irregular and fast, some heart ventricular contractions will occur when the heart ventricles are underfilled. This results in ventricular beats with insufficient low volume to transmit the pressure wave to the arm. Variations in cuff blood pressure readings is also common during atrial fibrillation due to changes in the beat to beat contraction and changes in left ventricular filling and ejection volume. It is often necessary to measure the blood pressure multiple times and average these values to obtain a more accurate blood pressure reading. For all patients with suspected new onset atrial fibrillation, a 12 lead electrocardiogram also known as 12 lead ECG or EKG is obtained. On the ECG of atrial fibrillation, there are no discrete atrial contractions as evidenced by P waves, but there are rapid, low amplitude, continuously varying fibrillatory waves, as shown here by the blue arrows. The ventricular rhythm is generally irregularly irregular, lacking a repetitive pattern. The baseline ECG should also be evaluated for markers of non-electrical cardiac disease such as left ventricular hypertrophy reflecting possible high blood pressure or Q waves indicating coronary artery disease. Markers of other electrical heart disease such as bundle branch block. Evidence of low heart rate or sinus node dysfunction. A transthoracic echocardiogram is needed even if the physical examination is otherwise normal. The echocardiogram does not need to be performed at the time of the first visit in stable patients. We obtain an echocardiogram in order to evaluate the size of the right and left atria and the size and contraction function of the right and left ventricles to detect possible valvular heart disease, left ventricular hypertrophy, diastolic dysfunction, and pericardial disease, 
and to assess peak right ventricular and right atrial pressures. The echocardiogram may also identify left atrial thrombus, although the sensitivity is low. A transosophageal echocardiogram is much more sensitive for identification clots in the left atrium or left atrial appendage and can be used to determine the need for anticoagulation prior to any attempt at pharmacological or electrical cardioversion. Generally, we refer patients with signs or symptoms of ischemic heart disease for exercise stress testing. Exercise testing is useful to help guide medication therapy for atrial fibrillation, and some medications are contraindicated in patients with coronary artery disease. Ambulatory cardiac monitoring with event recorders, adhesive event monitors, or insertable cardiac monitors, also referred to as implantable cardiac monitors or implantable loop recorders, can be used to identify the arrhythmia if it is intermittent and not captured on the routine ECG. Ambulatory ECG monitoring can also be utilized to correlate symptoms to the arrhythmia along with assessment of the atrial fibrillation burden. 24 to 48 hour halter monitoring mainly aids in the evaluation of overall ventricular response rates in individuals where a rate control strategy has been chosen and there is concern for inadequate heart rate control or bradycardia. To get detailed information about heart monitors in heart disease, you can review my video titled Heart Monitors available in this channel. I will leave the link in the video description below. We also obtain laboratory tests in patients with atrial fibrillation. We obtain complete blood count and kidney function tests as baseline in patients with atrial fibrillation. We also obtain thyroid function tests as clinical or subclinical overactive thyroid is present in less than 5% of patients with atrial fibrillation. In addition, we also obtain a chest x-ray and this may be a useful diagnostic test in select patients with evidence of shortness of breath and potential heart failure or risk of pneumonia. In subsequent videos, I will talk about how to treat atrial fibrillation. If you have any question about what I presented to you today, then subscribe to my channel and share your questions in the comment section below and I will reply to you. If you have a question that you would not like to share in public, then follow me on Twitter or Instagram at Dr. Bolad and then send me a private direct message and I will reply to you. If you found value in this video, then please like and share this video with family and friends. This is Dr. Bolad helping you with your heart health. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.